Detection of TBIs of any severity in young children is more difficult since they usually cannot articulate their symptoms. This is particularly true in cases of shaken baby syndrome, also known as non-accidental trauma, abusive head trauma, traumatic brain injury, intentional brain injury, abusive head trauma with impact, shaken baby syndrome with impact, and shaken impact syndrome. Children who are high criers are at a higher risk for being shaken. Yet research indicates that long bouts of infant crying is normal in human and other animal species and may even be necessary for normal neurological development. The onset is approximately two weeks. The peak is in the second month of life and it subsides more or less by four or five months. And during that time period, babies can cry a lot or a little depending on the baby and, and um, they can cry as many, much as five or six hours a day and still be perfectly normal. When a baby is going through one of these crying bouts, parents sleep deprived and frustrated can pick up their baby and just feel so anxious and angry even at a time that they just shake their baby. Now if it was a very serious hard shake, the baby would be symptomatic almost immediately. But in what we refer to as a milder shake, it can stun the baby and give them a small concussion and quiet them down. And the feedback or the impression the parent has is that this worked. Infants and toddlers are highly susceptible to abusive or non-accidental head trauma due to the disproportionate size of the head relative to the child's body. Even a mild shake, or one of relatively short duration, can have a devastating impact on a child's brain and neurological development. Unfortunately, in some of the cases that we're aware of, parents can tend to want to wait and hope that the baby gets better and that there's something else wrong and they'll, they'll put them back in their bed and, or, or they'll wait and see and it's critically important to get medical attention and help immediately. Of the babies that are shaken, 20 to 30 percent die and of those that survive, as much as 80 percent have lifelong disabilities, some sort of brain injury that's lifelong. So this is a very serious situation. The outcomes from shaken baby syndrome or shaking a baby can range anywhere from mild to moderate to very se severe. And in the cases that are what we would call more of a milder shake, the result can be learning disabilities, um, subtle um, behavioral changes later in life, um, vision problems, hearing problems, um, anything that the brain controls can be in a way moderately affected. Um, and that range can go all the way to in the more serious shakes where um, baby's shaken very hard and a lot of brain damage is done um, and damage done um, from that shaking that they initially are in a coma possibly in seizures and later in life can be so severely brain damaged that they actually have to be cared for for the rest of their life um, and oftentimes die at an earlier age.